bumper watch? Is it an automatic technically, or is it more like a manual wind? Or is it something I just made up right now to get views for my YouTube channel? We're gonna talk about all of that today. It is 2.56 p.m. Let's get down to business. Okie dokie, so I've been getting some questions about bumper watches ever since I promoted an Omega Seamaster bumper 2577 that I put for sale at the Time Teller shop. People are like, why are you saying bumper when it says automatic on the dial? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at what a bumper movement actually is. So here's the deal. Automatic watches may seem like a very modern day thing, and in some ways they are, but you might be surprised to learn that the concept behind a self-winding mechanism dates back to the 18th century. However, it wasn't until the 20th century that the technology kind of became more practical and widely used. So for you watch history buffs out there, you may be familiar with the name Perele or Perele or however you want to pronounce it. I could say it any which way and someone will inevitably complain. But we're gonna be talking about the Swiss watchmaker Abraham Louis Perele. And uh, he wasn't just a Swiss man with a fancy schmancy name, he also had some pretty fancy schmancy ideas. You see, in the 1770s, he came up with a watch movement that had a counterweight that would move when the person who owned the watch would also be moving. So if you were someone that had a pocket watch in your vest pocket and you were walking about town, this newfangled movement would again use that counterweight and it would actually wind the watch as you were, you know, just doing your everyday tasks. So he's spoken a lot about wristwatch history on this channel because I find a lot of these old school brands to be very, very interesting with just how they've influenced watchmaking as a whole. For instance, Cartier is kind of a company that gets written off as a fashion house because they have jewelry, they have uh, glasses frames, they have leather goods, uh, perfumes, they have a bunch of different things, but you might be surprised to learn that they were one of the first wristwatch manufacturers, period. And it was really in the early 20th century that watches became more wrist-worn than just exclusively pocket-worn. So again, it was kind of after World War I, during slash after World War I, that people saw the kind of appeal and functionality of having a watch on your wrist instead of just in your pocket of your vest. And again, in the early 20th century, specifically in the 1920s, it was a British watchmaker that actually developed the first real automatic wristwatch movement. And this totally makes sense because again, as watches were kind of transitioning into being a wrist-worn timepiece, the technology kind of had to keep up. So in 1923, John Harwood, again, a British watchmaker, developed a movement that had a counterweight that would move in a semicircle on the person's wrist. So as you were doing whatever you were doing, as long as you were alive and moving, that counterweight would move back and forth and it would wind the watch. And because that counterweight would kind of bump back and forth, this was known as a bumper movement. But because the watch is still getting power from the wearer, it's still a self-winding movement or an automatic watch. So pretty much from the 1930s to the 1950s, these bumper style automatics were incredibly popular, both with watchmakers and with watch buyers. I mean, hold on, you're telling me that I can wear a watch and not have to wind it? It just is always going as long as I have it on my wrist? That's pretty dang cool. And we take that for granted nowadays because, I mean, everybody wears automatic watches, right? I mean, why, why would you wear anything else? Quartz movements have no soul. I'm kidding guys, nine times out of 10, you'll catch me wearing a quartz watch. I wear G-Shocks 24 seven, let's be honest. But yes, jokes aside, we do see a lot of these bumper automatics when we're looking at early watches from brands like Omega. But we can't mention Omega without also mentioning Rolex. That's right, the other Swiss watchmaking powerhouse. Well, believe it or not, we have Rolex to thank for bringing us what we now know as automatic movements with free spinning rotors that have a counterweight that move 360 degrees in either direction without limitation. You see, Rolex used Aigler movements. Aigler was a watch movement manufacturer that got absorbed by Rolex, so they exclusively produced movements for Rolex. So while technically not in-house, they were in-house, and eventually Rolex just, you know, fully, totally consumed them and their movements just became Rolex movements. 
but even early Oyster Perpetuals like my Bubbleback 2940 from the early 1940s, those have free spinning rotors, so not bumper automatics. So I guess this brings us to the question, which one's better? Well, I guess the proof is in the pudding, right? I mean, nowadays, companies don't really use bumper automatics. We use free spinning rotors because of efficiency and because of wear and tear. So these old school bumper automatics, they're still ticking. They're still perfectly fine. Most of these old Omegas run quite well, but you could make the argument that there's more wear and tear on those bumper automatics because the counterweight is bumping back and forth. They are limited. And with the free spinning rotors of today not having the limitations and just being generally more smooth, it makes sense that the more modern design won out in the end. So I hope this episode was entertaining for you. I hope you learned something. And if you're fortunate enough to own one of these early automatics, again, these bumper movements, then you have a really cool snapshot of orological history. And again, it's a cool transitional period from manual wind mechanicals to now what we know as just automatic watches. So in the comment section below, let me know, do you have a bumper automatic? Which one do you own? Are you interested in any? And uh, let me know what you think about my Omega, because again, it is for sale. All right, guys, I'll catch you on the next one. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller, and always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it.